Hi guys, today we're going to mix together a couple of compounds, nitric acid and aluminum carbonate and this should generate some gas and what I'd like to do is get this bag to just plump up perfectly and then um, your job is going to be to figure out how much of this stuff, aluminum carbonate, the Jergens actually put into the bag to make this react. So let me just show you how the reaction proceeds, what it looks like. So I'm going to take some of this aluminum carbonate. Aluminum gets a plus three charge. CO3 has a negative two charge, so it's a little complicated. Then we'll take some nitric acid. So nitric acid, like all acids, starts with an H, so it's H something or other. Look it up on your flashcards. So I've got some of the aluminum carbonate in there, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'll add some nitric acid. And you can see the bubbles. And so I'm gonna collect all of that gas inside of a bag, and then uh, we'll just think this through, think through the stoichiometry. Okay, the first thing I need to figure out is how big are the bags? So I'll just open one up, add water until it's totally full. If I can make a giant mess here. Alright, full water. I'm just trying to figure out how big the bag is right now. I suppose I can lick it up on the box, see how big each bag is, but that probably works with English units, not metric units. Alright, that's full. Now I'm going to pour the water into the graduate cylinder, graduated cylinder, without spilling a drop, of course and we'll see how much water was in there and that's how big the bag should be it's uh, 700 or so let me see about 690 bottom of the meniscus 692 milliliters write that down 692 milliliters is how big the bag is so i'm back from doing my calculations and i use the the two calculators moles equals grams over molar mass and moles equals liters divided by 22.4 liters per mole and that comes from the mole box one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure takes up 22.4 liters of space i did my calculations and i weighed out my aluminum carbonate right here so you have to figure out the what aluminum carbonate is aluminum gets a plus three charge carbonate is a negative two so make sure you use your parentheses and all that so this is the right amount hopefully of aluminum carbonate. It's weighed out here and I covered up the answer so you can't see it. And then the other thing that I need is nitric acid. So I did a little calculation there as well, but that's those are calculations we haven't uh, done yet. It's all about molarity. And uh, I figured out that I need about 25 milliliters of this particular concentration of nitric acid to make this reaction work. There's my bag. It holds 692 milliliters. I wonder how many liters that is. And so I'm going to take my bag and I'm going to put the nitric acid, which is in great excess, so I have more than what I need, so I don't have to worry about that for my calculations. Put that in one corner of the bag, nitric acid, and I'll, then I'll take my aluminum carbonate and put that on the other side of this divider. I've got it all there. And I won't let them mix until I have the bag zipped up. All I have to do is mix the two compounds and then see what happens when they start to react. Oh, and the bag is just about full. Whoops, I hope it doesn't go any farther. It's really full and it's just it's very turgid. That's perfect. Filled it up just right. So your job is to tell me what happened in this lab. So uh, we had nitric acid and aluminum carbonate. It was a simultaneous double replacement and a decomposition reaction that was occurring here. So it was a little bit complicated. So balancing this reaction might present a bit of a challenge. You can go to this website right here and the fellow talks you right through how to balance that reaction. You probably need these two calculators right here. We'll also need the 692 milliliters. I'd ask you to come up with a nice title of your own and a procedure, what happened here, what safety issues were involved, and then the data. Now the main data that you're gonna need is your 692 milliliter bag with three safe figs. Show me how you calculated the liters. Use the factor label method, so 
down below, you'll show me a calculation, 692 milliliters. Save some space, equal sign is how many liters. We need a conversion factor right here, milliliters on the bottom, liters on the top. There's a lot of milliliters in one liter. Units cancel. And then I'd ask that you show me an example of each calculation, starting with, I think CO2 is in this column right here, and that's the only gas involved, and we had 6.692 liters of gas and show me how you do your calculations and then come up with some conclusions on what this lab was all about. Hope you had fun. I sure did.